good everyone i hope you guys have an amazing day so what i'll do today in this episode i will uh talk about uh, prompt builder and how you can leverage prompt builder to uh do certain activity uh in um on, on the record right so what i wanted to do today right i have a requirement i have a say account uh, description field and I want the account description field to be populated with uh, opportunity and case information and when I said opportunity I want uh, let's say I have an account right and my account has say 10 opportunities and out of 10 opportunities I got like five open opportunities and at the same time also got five case open cases so I want the description field to be populated with this information to say, hey, uh, this account has X, Y, Z opportunities and with this, this much amount pending or whatnot. And then the same thing about the case, right? So you can do that using a prompt builder template um, and you can assign that to your field um, using a page layout. So uh, edit page option so I'll, I'll show you how you can do that right so that's that's what we're trying to do that's what i'm trying to do in this episode and it, it's very simple to do that it will take you perhaps um maybe you know 15 20 minutes to do that i mean if you're doing this for the first time so first thing first right uh let's go and cr uh see how you can build a prompt okay so as usual so go to the scarecog icon and go to setup and excuse me it will take you to the setup place where you can type uh prompt uh sorry i spelled it incorrectly prompt right prompt builder so i'll go here now to save time i've already built a prompt but before that i'll show you how you can build it so you got a new template here right at the top and you can fill in the name and the um the, and then you have the template type so obviously the field generation which is what i'm going to show you at this stage <clears throat> well, what that means is that you wanted to populate a description or any other information on a field but this often involves user intervention if you do not want to do that uh what i mean by that is if you do not want a user intervention instead you want a flow to take care of it behind the scene for you automatically then you can use flex or if you wanted to give more information about the record summary and kind of stuff you can do that right so using prompts um uh, template you can do a lot of things right if you wanted to send out the newsletter if you wanted to draft an email you can do all of this stuff right and <clears throat> basically prompt is sits at top of llm that's a large language model you're not uh creating a language model using a prompt right it's just an interface if i put it in a very simple way it's an interface that sits on top of the large language model and you're using simple english <clears throat> excuse me or for that matter any language in the form of nlp which is a national language processing uh technique to uh, train your model to get the desired output. That's exactly what we're trying to do, right? So the prompt uh, builder, right? Uh, so once you do, once you go here and once you do next, uh, it will take you to uh, a page, something, um, <clears throat> something like this, right? This is what I've created um so here you actually write the prompt so in this case what i did i said hey update this specific uh description with uh information from opportunity and also from the case right now how do you get this stuff you just go here and you go to account and you know you can pick and choose which way you want and you can put it here now remember one thing is very important right this this section it's very important here, right? Because the way you describe things here will will actually help you uh, retrieve the right uh, and expected uh, information, right? So that's that's very important. Um, so uh, uh, my bad, uh, some spelling mistakes, but okay, that's all good. Uh, then you then I put some instructions, right? Please keep the description in simple English. Please do not duplicate the information. Uh, 
whatnot, right? So you can include a more instruction just to make sure your model understand what you're trying to achieve, right? That's that's the key. And at times you may not get it right in the first try. You might have to, you know, uh, fine tune. So prompt builder, I would say in a very simple way, if you wanted to make uh, your company uh, take the AI approach, and if you do not have someone who knows Apex, right? Like in the previous episode, I demonstrated how you can use the Apex to, um, uh, you know, build an action and then hook that up to Einstein Copilot. You can still do that using uh, Prompt Builder. You can hook this up to the pilot, Copilot, exactly the way I've demonstrated how you can do that using um, uh, for uh, the Apex. I'll show you in a second, right? Even that. Um, so. You may not get it right, like I said, right in the first try if you're trying to write the description. And that's why you probably need to come here and, you know, let's say if I go gene point and uh, I'll try it, you know, if you, and then you do the save and preview. So, and once you do that, you will get an information about, um, you know, what output you're getting. And if you're happy with that, you can go and save and activate it. If you're not happy with that, you need to do more changes to it. Yeah. So, it, like I said, right, it is a, it is an art. You may not get it right when you do that for the first time, but that's fine. Uh, but this is such a great opportunity for your business, for your organization, right? If you're using, um, if you if you're using Salesforce, right, you can start with Prompt Builder. Uh, to drive your AI strategy to to make sure that you can automate certain things and make the life of your admin or consultants much easier uh, going this route. Now, okay, so this is pretty cool, right? So the whole idea is to get the summary of an account with respect to opportunity and case, yeah? So once you do that, uh, what I'll do, I'll go to account. Yeah, I'll go to account. Reload, yeah, oh, come on. So I'm using a free org, right? As I mentioned in the last time. Now, if you haven't watched my previous episode, I highly encourage you to check it out. So let's say I'm using GenePoint, right? Now, I want, obviously I wanted to hook that prompt builder to a specific field, right? Uh, how do you do that? So you go to this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Gaycock icon, Got edit page, and and inside the edit page uh, screen, uh, go to details, and if you scroll down, uh, description. I mean, depends which field you wanted to. Uh, hook the prompt builder, which you have just built. So I wanted to do this to description. So I come here and I pick my uh, prompt builder template, right? And then I save it. That's all you have to do. If if you wanted to hook this to a field, right? Uh, that's okay. Now, once you go back, uh, let's pick up a, I'll show you how it works. So <clears throat> let's pick up a account. So obviously no one gene point. I will use, let's say, SF4s, right? And now I will go scroll, I'll go to the details. And now you say you can see that, right? We don't have any info here, but you can see this, uh, this symbol here. So you click on here. And now once you do that, you click on here. And now you'll get this Einstein chat window. Here's what I come up with. Are you happy with this? You can see that um, account ID currently has one open opportunity and no open case. This opportunity name is valid, evaluated with a project close date. Opportunity is currently in the progress stage. So you get an update here and I'll say I'm happy with that and I'll save it. So you see what happened here. So you got a response from an AI, that's using LLM, right? Um, to populate the right description for your account, right? Otherwise, think about a scenario, you don't have 
this prompt builder, right? Some someone has to go and look at each and every opportunity to see which one is closed, which one is open, and then you know write a statement, right? So in this case, you know the prompt uh, template kind of automate that for you and makes it quite easier because it's using uh, LLM behind the scene to um, read the data. Obviously, you know according to Salesforce, this is built on the trust layer, so that your data is quite safe. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, you must be thinking, okay, you, this guy mentioned a lot about LLM. So can we change our LLM? Can we change our model? Yes, you can. So the way to do that, if you go to, um, uh, let's say, the setup again. Um, and let's go back to the same prompt. So if I go to prompt, Prompt Builder, and if I go to this, um, the same one, now you can see here, right, the models. You can pick and choose which one you want to use. Uh, I've used Azure OpenAI. You can choose, you know, OpenAI GPT-4, uh, default. Uh, there are different ones, right? So you can pick and choose, or you can uh, bring your own, right? If you wanted to, if you have trained your own model, you can do that and, you know, you can hook that up. So that's one thing, right? Quite simple. Okay. Now this is with respect to how you can use that on a field or on a, on an object field, right? Now, what happens if, if your requirement changes and you say, look, I want to hook this up to my current Einstein Copilot or whatever Copilot I have uh, here, right? How do you do that? It's pretty simple. So what do you, what do, you do? So you go to co um, under setup, right? You go to Copilot, uh, yeah, and you go to Copilot action, and the same what we did last time. You can go to new Copilot action, and you can choose uh, float. Uh, sorry, uh, prompt template. And you can pick and choose which one you want it to do and click on next. And that will create a um, an action for you, a custom action. Then you go to Einstein Copilot. And once you do that, uh, you go to Einstein Copilot here. And you can go to Open in Builder. And then, obviously, um, if you wanted to include that, you need to deactivate your existing copilot. Depending on the copilot you want that action to be part of, then you go to copilot library. And if you have an existing one which has not been assigned, you will see that once you deactivate, you can assign it. That pretty much the same uh, how we did in the last episode when it comes to assigning an Apex. Uh, uh, action to this copilot, right? So that's how you can assign it. And similarly, you can do that using flows, right? Flows are pretty simple. So obviously, I know that if you are, most of the people will be tempted to use the prompt builder, which is what I highly recommend you start with. And then you go for the flows. And then because these are the two tools, uh, which is very convenient for admin to use that. And obviously, if you are a big dev house, right? If you have a, uh, complex requirement, you can obviously use the Apex, right? So so that's pretty much I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as you can see, right, it's quite simple uh, to use this uh, prompt builder, right? Pretty simple, pretty easy, and prompt templates are really great. Um, so this is what I would say, it you know, to make AI easier for non-technical users to use it, right? At the end of the day, right? Because there was, if, if 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 you take a journey back to let's say 2012, 2013, right? AI is more about that time. AI was more about, uh, you know, researchers, you know, engineers who wanted to work on the deep learning model. Machine learning model was very popular at that time, right? Then deep learning, uh, you know, came into picture. Then it kind of got explored, right, with different uh, vendors. Uh, especially the Google, right? Google really played a big role in making, you know, especially with the DeepMind and other stuff, right? I really think that Google really played a big role uh, in making sure, uh, you know, the open AI uh, kind of, I mean, 
the, the, let me put this way, right? I mean, if it's not for the deep learning, uh, for the Google paper, right? The, the, uh, the transformer architecture one, um, then I don't think the open AI would have reached to the stage what it is now. I'm not, I'm not discrediting anything. Open AI is really great. Uh, but the Google played a big role uh, with that uh, the attention paper, and and based on that, you know, you got a transformer architecture, and then uh, from there you got a generative AI and 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 whatnot, right? Um, so yeah, uh, that's and then now Salesforce came into picture, right? Every even Oracle uses the generative AI. IBM has been there, you know, uh, with the IBM Watson for for years now. And Azure is there with the Azure uh, machine learning platform, and and Microsoft has its own Copilot now uh, on Teams. Uh, AWS has its own uh, AI. So a lot of companies are investing heavily on artificial intelligence. And now I am a, tran- a transhumanist, right? I believe in transhuman technology. So for us, uh, anything happening in the AI space is great space because. We, because obviously transhumanism, right? It, it is a place where you fusion technology with biology, right? Like synthetic biology, nanotechnology, chemistry, artificial intelligence, right? Um, and uh, you, you fusion all together. And then obviously the gene editing, which is a CRISPR-Cas9, which, which plays a very important role. So I, sorry, I don't want to get into that. But I'm very extremely passionate about transhumanism. That's why I wrote a book on transhumanism. Um, the world post-humanism how, how, from a transhumanist perspective. So if you're interested, you can go and read that. Um, so, yeah, the, this is a great, really great thing, right? If you're a Salesforce um, a user, if you're an uh, in-house uh, store or users of uh, Salesforce for, their, for your CRM stuff, then I would highly encourage you to check their Copilot. Uh, you will really find a lot of great things uh, as well as the great use cases to automate it a lot because it helps save much of your time and which in turn helps you uh, save a lot of money, right? So uh, I'm not <laughs> doing a sales pitch, right? As you can see, I'm not really great with that. But I mean, obviously Salesforce, is, it's not my company, right? So I'm just trying to say, right? But it's different when I go and sell my product, the product which I'm building, then my sales pitch will be extremely different because that's something I'm building, right? It's a part of my business. So I have to be extremely assertive. Uh, but sales was, yeah, this is just a tool I use. So if you're interested, you know, go and use it. That's that's all I can say. Uh, so that's all I wanted to cover uh, in this episode. Hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.